Is okay. that in? I'm ready. And mark it. Take one. Peter Pook. I guess we should go back to the start. I think everyone was so gracious at the time because I mean, we had just gotten out of college. We got out in May of 2003 and was in production in October. I remember Ty and I, our birthdays are within uh, days of each other and uh, celebrating them uh, right before we started production. It was, uh, yeah. Uh, Ty and I had gone to school together at School of Visual Arts and then from there, I would worked on all those films so it's, uh, you know, naturally he wanted myself on there along with the other collaborators like Graham Resnick and me, at the time, learning about film festivals, I was just not very familiar with that world. And Ty had gone on the film festival circuit and was, would come back and tell me these stories, and including going to Sitges and then hanging out not only with Eli Roth, but also with Quentin Tarantino. Just having an incredible time there. It seemed like so legendary, but all of these connections that he built uh, really just led to uh, the next projects. I remember at the top of 2006 getting an email from Ty that we were going to make a, a bigger film. You know what he calls a real film, and I said, "Great, let, let's do it." And it was House of the Devil, and so I remember prepping a bunch of uh, prep the schedule and a budget for it. And uh, at the end of the day, the financing wasn't going to come in on time. Ty kind of knew it, and kind of quickly wrote another film, and then he pitched you, which was Trigger Man, to do it very quick. And at this time, I think he had uh, he had been talking with Joe Swanberg um, and the Cross Brothers about. You know, mini DV was really, or digital video was really uh, acceptable as a film format. Right. So he felt like, why not? Let's just go out and shoot something, uh, and I'll do a horror film on video, and like just keep it simple, micro budget. It was like the birth of micro budget filmmaking that we know of now. You know, today, like micro budget is so common, but at the time, I think it was uh, the beginning of that new wave. Right after I think uh, getting back from Trigger Man. And you approached me and said, hey, uh, I'm doing a Graham's movie. You know, how would you like to go back down to Wilmington, Delaware and run the show? And I think at that point, like, I knew Graham as, as Ty's friend, as a collaborator, generally as, I think, in, in, in editorial and in sound, but not knowing Graham as the filmmaker himself. And then off Graham took it into post. And then, of course, when I got back, once again, you said, hey, I have this other script I would like you to read. It's a uh, collaborator Glenn, it's from Glenn McQuaid, um, who you may know f who did all the visual effects on The Roost. And I said, okay, let me take a look at it. And I read it and I loved Glenn's script uh, because it was sort of like, wow, this is a real fantasy kind of film. It felt like a different type of movie making. We're going to create a world. And, and once again, we kind of approached it with the same mentality I approached the other two films, Trigger Man, and I can see you. We start to build a team towards it, uh, and slowly and slowly, uh, it started to kind of grow. And and then I think it ultimately came out of the casting process. I remember sitting down with Glenn and just kind of talking to him about like who he envisioned for his his uh, his lead role. And, and he started to describe it, and I kind of just proposed Dominic Monaghan. But it also, when we kind of brought it up to you, you kind of laughed and was just like, oh, well, let's go get Nicholson as well, and teased me about it and said, like, I had this man crush. And, uh, <laughs> but, but sure enough, I was determined. And uh, I remember uh, cold calling his agent um, and uh, kind of convincing him that we had this project that was great for him. He had to take a look at it. We sent a lovely care package with the script comic which was servicing as a storyboard. We had David Bell provide some conceptual production design, imagery of what our sets could look like. Of course Glenn wrote a nice handwritten note telling Dom gushing as to why you should you know consider the role of Arthur Blake and um, and yeah sure enough I got a call from Dominic Monaghan about two and a half weeks later and so off we went in 2007 to go make the first unit of I Sell the Dead. So we shot for that period and then it gave Glenn some time to then kind of get to the edit, and then we got this opportunity to kind of do a short with JT Petty uh, to support his feature, The Burrowers, that was uh, due to come out from Lionsgate. Oh, wow. And then we went in and did this thing called Blood Red Earth. Uh, but I think the project came out really nicely, and uh, you know, I, I you know, it's one of the pro one of the titles that I think more people uh, would really appreciate if they could see it. It wasn't very long before we had to come jump back and revamp uh, 
prep into the second unit of Ice of the Dead. So this is now Ron has returned from Hellboy 2 and is able to kind of join us for a couple days with Dom. Back again at Wadsworth, it was right. quite cold. No. All right, folks, this is camera rehearsal. One thing we try to do with scare flicks and glass eye picks is, is really operate on sort of an honor system and, a, um, you know, honor among thieves. You know, we really, we stand by that. And then, honestly, Perlman was going to shoot last spring and he just he couldn't quite. And I, I said, well, Ron, and, and it, it seemed to be over. We were looking for a replacement and it seemed like we tried as hard as we could. I think we tried already three times to schedule. And um, I said, I understand, Ron, you can't do it. And then, you know, he called me two days later and he said, if you'd wait, I'll, uh, I'll do it. You little bastard. You little bastard. Bye. Going into 2008 with uh, two movies to post out, uh, and then the return of The House of the Devil. The financing company behind the House of the Devil, we started to speak to them about possibly doing like a slate of films. And so negotiations started early on, and then as we uh, started to take Ice of the Dead out to film festivals, so we had gone, we had premiered uh, at Toronto after dark, and then Sieges, and then ultimately having our big real reveal at the Slam Dance Film Festival as the opening night film. Another exciting adventure. We had Dom with us. We did a lot of press, and while that was going on, we were kind of doing the real deal. We were making deals, and ultimately, <laughs> out of uh, Slam, out of Slam Dance in the Park City, uh, because Sundance goes on at the same time, like we kind of walked out of there ultimately with this three-picture deal with uh, MPI or Dark Sky to make Bitter Feast, Hypothermia, and then Stakeland. We shifted gears and started ramping up for Bitter Feast, a very uh, humble, once again, micro-budget film that Joe Maggio would come with, with write and direct, and uh, and that felt like uh, it felt like summer camp, and it was nice. Um, but I think another thing that was so cool is once again we were sort of pioneers in the uh, technology. So talk about that. Oh right, that's right. Um, so at this point, I mean, we're talking about 2009. Uh, HD is around, um, and it's the introduction of DSLR cameras, the Canon 5D Mark II. And what made the camera so special was that it could shoot video in extremely, incredibly low light. Yeah, we got through Bitter Feast, and, and once again, it was like non-stop. So it was like, get through Bitter Feast, set up post-production, and then uh, Brent was already in Pennsylvania, where he's from, uh, and Jim Mikkel has a family farm there, and we were on to do Stakeland. That was right away the next production. And we knew that that production would be also separated, taking a kind of a page out of the isolated book. We were going to break the production up into two units so that we can really get the different seasons and give Jim an opportunity to start editing and and sure enough it has always been helpful to do it that way. While we're up there we also decided you know we have the cast here let's go ahead and shoot webisodes and so we were able to bring a, another a whole other team up uh, to join us and shoot a couple days of, of uh, webisodes with, uh, for Stakeland with different directors directing prequels of the main characters from the film. And so that was uh, a real bonus to be able to pull that off uh, in the amount of time that we had. So it was always constantly by the skin. You know? It's like, uh, as if making a movie wasn't enough, let's go do this.
just a goddamn beautiful day. As each production would wrap, it was always for me a return to, to dealing with the post-production, checking in with the previous film and seeing where that last left off. So it was like, let's get through Bitter Feast and wrap up post-production on that, do any pickup shoots, um, and then Stakeland was then launched into post-production, and then, well, now to the next one, and that was Hypothermia. It was quite uh, an undertaking to shoot a movie about a family that goes ice fishing with a creature looking underneath who's eaten everything as another family comes to join them. Uh, it was a tough production because you're in the elements, you're just exposed all day, but, you know, we got through that film. It was almost immediately I felt like this sort of murmur of like, well, maybe Ty wants to do another film, uh, and Dark Sky is really interested in it, and the pitch is this, the innkeepers, and we'd go back to the Yankee Peddler, which I mentioned earlier, where we'd stay while we were making House of Devil. And yeah, unbelievable, we went back to make, to, to make this movie. And it was lovely because we lived at the hotel and would wake up, go downstairs for breakfast, and then start shooting in the lobby. It was beautiful. Uh, I don't think there's a production that I could have prepped any faster than that movie. Um, and once again, uh, uh, Jacob Jaffe's with me as the line producer. And we, who had been with, uh, with me on, you know, because of House of the Devil. So it was great. We brought a lot of the team that was there, the, the department heads uh, from House of the Devil, which made the making of The Innkeepers possible. You know, we, we try to work with the same crew members uh, if they're available and willing, because obviously everyone's moving on with their careers to bigger and better. But at the same time, you know, there's a certain uh, approach that we take to making films that takes care of the crew, and so they're willing to come back. Hey guys, let's do this! Another production, another very ambitious production. It's the first time that uh, uh, I'm working with you as a director, mm -hmm. uh, and that was Beneath. <laughs> and it's a movie about a, a, a group of young graduates, and they go off to this lake, possibly being uh, uh, infested with some sort of creature, but I mean, it's just a folk tale. I mean, who believes that, right? And sure enough, they get into this boat, and then uh, it's not long before this creature, uh, this giant fish comes in and, and begins to play this game with them and it turns into Survivor on the boat as each of these uh, characters, these friends, begin to really uh, test the <laughs> uh, commitment to the friendship and you know, at the end of the day it's like, are you going to really uh, save your friend or save yourself? So Beneath wrapped up, when we came back, we had another uh, young, uh, hungry producer join us and uh, by the name of Jennifer Wexler. We brought her on board and she, so she took on bringing Glass Eye to have a real social media presence and then also learning like post-production uh, from a production, from a producing side and then which led her to ultimately start producing micro budget films of her own. I've taken a step back on these kind of smaller productions and then kind of uh, work in a more advisory role as I have other commitments on bigger productions. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a great tradition of kind of pushing uh, forward uh, you know, new talent, ultimately, new voices, you know, trying to tell interesting stories, um, you know, doing pulpy films. And, um, and also, I think, you know, Continue to fight the good fight, telling really interesting genre stories. I think that, you know, like, at the end of the day, like that is something that like drew me to what we were doing. Our, you know, all these movies that we've made, they're all elevated, they're all intelligent, um, and I think that's what I look for in every project. And that's because of the what I've learned working so closely with you at Glass Eye in basically ten years. Yeah.